So we'll now continue. And please don't be shy. Ask questions if you have any. We want this to be as interactive as possible. And as you may have noted, uh, interaction is also there on the uh, social media. You have the uh, Twitter stream there. We'll see that a number of members of the OP3FT uh, were answering questions online. So you see interaction is also there for uh, the, the shy who will not like to take the microphone. You can use your tweet. And uh, in particular, about the next theme, we are now moving back to an external um, speaker, not from a B3FT, but one that is very much involved in the project. And his organization also was and is Pierre Bernis, the uh, deputy CEO of AFNIC. Uh, uh, Pierre, who will be telling us about um, the France project and uh, the uh, internet governance issues. I don't want to um, I can't be sure, but maybe we won't be talking only about the program technology, but for those who uh, follow these issues, the internet governance uh, is um, an issue that um, uh, over the years uh, has grown for something for a small number of people to talk about to a real society uh, debate that the governors, the media, the public opinion have uh, seized uh, now. And it's uh, something that is a concern for all of us because the internet has taken such place in our lives. And of course, this is also very much related to the programs technology, as you have heard um, with uh, Amorim. Anna, it's, it is a project that is geared to the users. When we speak of users, we speak about the way um, the network, the internet is being governed. Therefore, Pierre, now it's over to you. Thank you, Stefan. Hello, good evening, Pierre Bernice, and thank you for. Um, uh, taking part in this interview and telling us about the uh, internet governance and the Frogans project. For those of you who were not there at the first conference uh, about the uh, Frogans technology, AFNIC had uh, graced us with uh, uh, their presence with Mathieu Vell, who had come to speak to us about the dot Frogans um, extension that we spoke about um, uh, at length um, today. Uh, AFNIC is the technical operator of the DOT programs, uh, which was delegated to a B3FT at the end of a 2013, as Amory reminded us recently, just now, a few seconds ago, or minutes, and now up here, Bernicio coming under a different hat today, um, in that you are uh, an unavoidable uh, stakeholder uh, on, in the field of uh, the internet uh, in France, AFNIC. Uh, maybe you can introduce us uh, uh, the role of AFNIC and its role in uh, terms of internet governance. Good evening to all of you. Um, briefly, I'm the uh, deputy CEO of AFNIC. Of AFNIC. Um, I came back to AFNIC in 2012 after uh, spending some time uh, in a ministry at the time. And um, this uh, allowed me to meet the first time with uh, Amory Alexi and, and, and get a first uh, feel of the Frogans technology before even I went back to uh, AFNIC. So it's a great pleasure for me to see you tonight and to see that uh, much uh, progress has been made and that we are partnering with you in a way. And to give you a very short description of what AFNIC is, it is an, like an association, uh, like a spin-off of INRIA. INRIA initially in all olden times, um, there was a small team there, INRIA, that was um, 
matching the .fr extension when we realized that it was uh, just much more than just a few researchers using this and that there were all sorts of users that we needed to grow to get organized and, and therefore an association was created with a multi-stakeholder um, governance like often is the case uh, with the internet uh, ethnic uh, can accept uh, as members or uh, users, uh, whether private or uh, physical persons, uh, the, the uh, people who sell you the, uh, the, the, the extensions, the dot .fr or others, and the public authorities. We now have some 80 um, staff, and uh, traditionally that's it was known as the register, registry office of the .fr extension. And the great change, and we're very proud of this, we have now become a, a technical registry operator working for dot programs and other uh, customers of the new GLDs who are old French. And that was our choice at AFNIC to um, be close to our clients in a naming world that is very international with uh, very strong positions uh, for the Americans. So we thought we're not uh, worse than others. Uh, we're uh, uh, just as good, even better uh, sometimes than others, uh, international players, I mean. And, and we're close to our um, customers. So let's uh, be fresh and be proud of it. And uh, what's interesting between AFNIC and uh, OP3FT is this uh, positioning on a no-profit uh, activity. You say AFNIC is an association. Does that have any impact on the management of your um, activities? Well, of course. Uh, and I would, uh, would say it was a uh, given right from the start. We spoke about governance earlier. I, I remember uh, Amoe saying, we are a foundation, and unlike association, we have a board of directors. Well, uh, rest assured, we also have a board of directors, and I would like to uh, greet um, uh, two uh, boards of directors, two members of the board here, plus the former director, Stéphane Montalbain, here. So we have a top quality board of directors. AFNIC, so AFNIC is an association, a non-profit uh, association, which means that whether we are operator of a .fr extension or other extensions, at the end of the day, the uh, any profit we generate, we reinvest back into the community uh, through formal uh, commitments that we will uh, make on .fr. We pay back 90% of the benefit of the profits of the, this to foundation, which will soon be uh, set up. But even indirectly, whether there's a foundation or not, we don't pay directors, we don't pay out um, dividends, and our mission is to ensure that the internet is stable, secure, open to innovations, and where the French community plays a forefront role in that these investments are made to the benefit of the French internet community. This is uh, the purpose of the association right from the start. You also said that AFNIC is, was like a spin-off of INRIA, if I'm not mistaken, is a research center. In other words, um, you still have a very strong bent on um, research, innovation on the internet. Well. Uh, it would be too broad to say the internet uh, such, but we do have an R&D department that is quite active working on uh, the protocols uh, related to our business. For instance, the, the ONS publication, there's uh, a, a kind of um, derivative of the DNS, but for objects. Mm -hmm. ONS, and uh, it's uh, now a standard for the uh, objects internet that we have developed jointly with the uh, DSA, and we have had uh, traditional relationships with uh, INRIA, who, who sit at the board of directors as well. So today you're telling us about um, internet governance. Before you tell us about the recent um, 
uh, events that have uh, stood out in terms of internet governance uh, recently. Could you tell us about this governance, uh, draw a picture of the, of the, of the, the players, uh, the, um, the problems um, behind it? The fact that uh, uh, there is governance. So, if if it if it's uh, if it's recorded, uh, maybe uh, if I can do in a snap uh, shot uh, uh, and then the uh, uh, portrait of all the players. Uh, no, no, that's I don't know. I'll try. So, internet governance. Let's start with um, what is maybe obvious to, to all of you. There is a technical dimension. What is um, protocols? Uh, who decides on what protocol? How does it work? There's an, over the technical layer there's, or dimension, there's a political or even geop geopolitical uh, dimension. Is, uh, uh, the, the, the world is a village and so on. You've heard this many times. It means that, that from uh, there, in terms of governance, uh, the international organizations, the governments and so on, they certainly have questions about uh, the fact that it can uh, work like this. And there are more business, industrial considerations that are related to the first aspect, the technical aspects, some, oftentimes. Um, so what are the uh, uh, interests of the major international firms and how do the lobbies interact? So there, that's only to say, to mention three dimensions. And, and there's a, a defining moment, uh, which is the World Summit on the Information Society in 2002 and 05 in Tunis afterwards, in Geneva and Tunis. Not, I mean, uh, that the text is legible as many United Nations documents is uh, uh, absolutely uh, uh, difficult to, to read, but it's the first time that the UN, uh, the top level, started looking into how the internet was being governed and uh, whether there was a need to do anything about it. So it was like a, a turning point from a purely technical type of governance. We moved to uh, governance where we have the stakeholders fighting on issues such as what is the place of governments, of private companies, and, uh, how, and what about the civil society. And that's when uh, the internet governance comes into the to the forefront of uh, uh, the political debate internationally. We still haven't come out of this uh, debate, and the issue of um, internet governance. I don't want to anticipate. Um, uh, uh, we don't want to become experts of ourselves in a way. That's the the big issue. We're working so much on ourselves that we become totally disconnected from reality. Mm, so about the major issues uh, uh, related to internet governance, you have the protection of personal data, that's, um, uh, you will understand easily. It's not within the um, internet governance uh, circles that can be treated. It's a massive surveillance, for instance, on how to be protected against this, uh, whether from a technical point of view, how to have the protocols to protect you, you against that kind of surveillance, or from a political point of view, can there be any type of international mechanisms, mechanisms uh, for this? Uh, the um, uh, digital fracture uh, also, how come uh, more than a third of the world population is still excluded from the digital world? What can be done about this? So you see there are some questions which theoretically are at the heart of the uh, internet, internet governance. Thank you um, uh, for uh, depicting this uh, landscape in a few uh, strokes. So I opened this document which you recommended and I find it very interesting. 
if you want more information, Ethnic published this uh, note about uh, the governance of internet uh, available on the Ethnic website, talking about the latest news. I know Ethnic took part in the ITF uh, forum in Istanbul. That you were there present personally. Could you tell us a few words about this? Um, well, I realized that by wanting to be uh, quick, I forgot to mention a few um, organizations uh, that, in terms of internet governance, we mentioned ICANN earlier. And we'll get back to this later because it's uh, true. It's, um, a body where the, the policies related to naming are being discussed, uh, use single identifiers, or, and so on. So it's quite fundamental in the internet. And also, it has a multiplayer model, which means that it's both a body that uh, will stipulate a number of rules, but also it's a laboratory for multiplayer governance is promoted in many areas of the internet and to uh, go to do this rapidly you have ITF, uh, W3C, uh, also bodies involved in the internet governance. Although sometimes they don't want to talk politics uh, so they hide away but they are really at the heart of the governance. The um, ITU also, uh, which is part of this uh, landscape, as they have uh, standardized a number of protocols, and this they did quite um, a long time ago, and they remain quite powerful on a number of issues. And you have FGI, FGI, which is the um, Internet Forum on the Governance of Internet, which is a spin-off of the uh, uh, World Summit on uh, Information Society. As the world governments could not agree on a number of themes that were maybe too political for them to agree, so who will uh, supervise the root of the internet? How do you share power? And, and by extension, what is the, the, the role of governments in, in, in this? Uh, can, how can they protect their citizens? How can they... Uh, they uh, struggle against its pornography uh, on the internet and so on. Well, as many questions that were not uh, addressed as part of the World Summit. But after that, they decided to set up a, a non going forum, permanent forum, uh, where people could discuss these things. It's the FGI Forum on the Governance of the Internet. It's been exist in existence for nine years. I went there. I'm not the only one in this room, actually. Mm, one of the takeaways of this uh, forum is that it um, embraces many different um, questions. 3,000 people meet for once a year, and the forum was was told that they were not supposed to make decisions, and they were not quite uh, in a position to make any recommendations. So it's quite interesting to attend, but it's not very useful in the uh, immediate future. Uh, plus the fact that the issues are quite complicated. There are many, and there are many stakeholders, NGOs, governments, and so on and so forth. Um, private sectors of the technical community, and also their international. I have, uh, insist on this point because the FGIs have had their offsprings in the various countries, in particular in France. We have one. Uh, and locally, it's not the same approach. If at the French level, we decide that for us, the issue is, what shall I say, uh, the DNS blockage, because this is something we hear a lot about uh, lately when they uh, adopt laws against uh, cyber terrorism. We, locally, you know who uh, you're talking to, who has made a decision. It's on, at the international level, it becomes much more difficult to tell. So FGI is an example of, um, of a body which uh, is interesting to fuel the discussions, but will not change our life on a 
practical level, uh, usually you know you need to travel uh, far away. It takes a long time. Um, uh, you need to stay in very informal five-star hotels, so it's expensive. That's one thing. But there's another initiative that came about this year called Net Mundial. Net Mundial is a is the, the the Brazilian chairwoman who became angry because it, she realized that um, oh the chair the president of the Brazil who realized that her smartphone was being uh, tapped so she said that we can't go on like this we need transparency so um, they started discussing and the president of ICANN played an important role there. A number of players, the American government, uh, Brazilian, French government, uh, uh, other European players, decided to meet together to start a multiplayer uh, meeting, trying to agree on a number of basic principles in terms of um, internet governance. This resulted in a five-page document, not even six-page, which is legible, which is really big news because never anything had been written that was uh, legible and less than 100 pages. So now you have a six-page document, or less than six pages, that tells you what is accountability, transparency, what are the uh, various recourses that you can have in terms of international organization, what is massive surveillance. And so, and so, uh, compared with the FGI, I'd say what is uh, that was interesting in 2014 is this uh, the release of this memo. Maybe it's not revolutionary, but at least it's something that can be enforced. And when you go uh, abroad and you start discussing about the reform of uh, the major institutions that um, manage ICAM, for instance, you can tell uh, ICAM, you can tell them accountability was defining this net mundial which you took part in. Uh, we have definitions that people have agreed upon, and that's really valuable and invaluable, and that will allow us to build in the next few years to build the reforms of the various multiplayer organizations so that we can make sure they're well on the, the right track for public interest, transparency, efficiency, and that they accept that there could be some uh, recourse against their decision. So um, very interesting. I very much um, invite you to read the principles of that module. And another point you raised briefly, though, was the transition about the administration of the root of the internet. Maybe I'm not putting it in very clear terms. Is this something you could tell us about? Was this a decision of, uh, of the American government? Was it the, uh, is the Department of Commerce of the American government that made this uh, um, uh, historical decision to, to cease to be the authority that will uh, administer the root of the internet? Okay, well, basically, there you're right, yes. Uh, the, the root of the internet uh, to materialize it is the capacity that we have to include at the highest level of the internet to include a um, new extensions. Just like uh, if you ask, say, dot frogans, it, it's uh, now entered into the root of the internet. It went through a number of rules and protocols. We completed a number of documents, the first contact, second, and so on. And we went through uh, the red tape and so on. At the end, said, OK, you worked by the, the book, no opposition. OK, we stamped this, and you're on board the route. And so uh, the fact that uh, it's stamped, it was the American government that was uh, fixing the stamp initially, they checked that you had uh, followed the rules. Now, of course, it's a potential, great potential power, which generated much discussion because um, why should it be the Americans, not the Chinese? Why is it the Americans alone and not the Europeans with them? And if uh, the uh, Americans decide to remove the dot .fr because they don't like uh, Jacques Chiat's uh, position for the first Gulf War. What can we do? So many issues around this, symbolic and other, because, it, oh, I said symbolic, because the, 
the American government didn't never quite used this potential power it had in its hands. So the final decision of the American government was to say, I would accept, I would agree to cease to operate this provision of this route. Not, not that it has um, let go already, but they said they would accept to cease to operate it if the internet community would agree on a supervision system for the route that would be as good as mine, but not a governmental one. And they asked ICANN to organize the uh, discussion on this, and we're right in the middle of this discussion. We're trying to find a solution that is at least as good as the previous one that would not involve um, intergovernmental uh, bodies and maybe incidentally would improve the performance of the uh, function because there's always room for progress. The end of this process would be September 2015 when on paper that would be the end of the contract that the American government passed with the um, ICANN when they said you will operate the uh, this function on a day-to-day -day basis and I'll just check that you do it well. So when the uh, contract terminates in September 2015, either there is an alternative uh, to uh, this and uh, to replace the American government they accepted and then the, it's the end of the U.S. Uh, government supervision or uh, the, and if there's n nothing else, well, uh, we go on for another many years. But it's the first time at least that in such an open way, the possibility that the supervision would be handed over is questioned, is asked. Thank you. That brings to mind, because this is the Frogans Technology Conference, that the Frogans project is OP3FT. Delegation of a new GTLB, the project of introducing a new software layer on the internet. Stakeholders joining the project, and therefore very similar to what you told us. My question, therefore, is quite open. I'm wondering, as of today or maybe tomorrow, OP3FT, will it be will be playing an important role in internet governance. But how and why should it be committed? What do you think, Pierre Bonis? Oh, what a question. It's interesting, at the same time, complex to answer that question. I think it's interesting to come back to the three functions I spoke of, technical, industrial and political. At AFNIC, our job, not because we're of the public interest, it's because it's a part of our purpose, is to try to make sure that the French community plays a, a key role even in these discussions. So at AFNIC, we organize debates, discussions, public debates, we take part in these debates, and so on. That is a full part of our activities. That has to be financed. It's uh, quite heavy, but exciting. OP3FT, should it be positioned on this same type of area? It's up to its members. But there's one thing that AFNIC doesn't do, and that OP3FT will must certainly do, being involved in internet governance that's linked to the industrial and technological challenges. I heard earlier that the decision was taken not to go to W3C and to make move forward and to create a community of users before starting discussions such as W3C. Fine, but once the user community exists, there will probably be a need to promote it, to defend it in at places like W3C, ICANN, and UTF. Because the technologies that are starting to be used will make some want to feel copy, uh, some 
work around the initial meaning of the technology. Some people don't know it, but it would be lovely to discover it and to use it. So by defending and promoting the Frogan's technology, I think there's something for P3FT to do that other digital players in France won't have to do because they are on technologies that are not breakthrough or new technologies. I'm talking about standard talks on what happens in the internet layers that everyone knows by heart. So that's the main reason why I could imagine that OP3FT should be involved. But I'm saying this after quickly setting aside internet governance from a more political perspective, because AFNIC is working on it, and AFNIC is open to OP3FT as a member. But we're not the only ones. OP3FT may decide to launch out into this approach, bearing in mind that this is an exciting approach, but that means a lot of work. Uh, but there are some uh, tests, uh, some people here who could confirm that. I'd like to come back to that to inform you and everyone at the same time, because OP3FT has just become a member of the college of the registers stakeholders group at ICANN. Julie Laurent, the legal director and myself, we represent OP3FT at that group. And the purpose, and it's a fine transition you offered me, thank you, is that OP3FT is increasingly involved on these bodies. Before opening up to questions in the room, could you comment upon innovation? AFNIC is the back end, the technical registry for that fragrance, but not only. There are the plans. AFNIC developed development of the new GTLT programs for years. It built that with the rest of the community. It may be a difficult question, I know, but out of the 1930 projects revealed in June 2012, we get the feeling that innovation is represented by the Frogans project, but it's quite rare. Is it, as a technical service provider, the impression that you would have at AFNIC in this respect? What we see with Frogan's technology is quite unusual, would you say, or is that a false impression? Thank you for that question, and I'd really answer that, bringing back to mind something dating back from my pre-Afnic days. I remember a meeting with Anne Mori where he presented Dot Frogan's to a team at the time at ICANN in charge of the new GTLD. And the answer given to him at the time is that you were the first to explain to us that you want an extension to make your technology work. You're the first and only one. So I think that summarizes more or less what I would have to say. You can have innovations of use in many extensions. There are many extensions, GTLD extensions, that will create uh, changes in use. I won't take examples of our clients in particular. Let me take the example of dot photography. It's quite funny. We have people who have registered hundreds, who have filed hundreds of applications for hundreds of of them figuring that one will work. That's not very innovative, but there you have it. That photography comes out just about when we have the greatest difficulty with control over personal data, private data. And that photography is stealing market shares from Flickr. So we have this sort of old technology, GTLD extensions, whereas, frankly, the future is with social networks. And bam, you have an extension that's stealing clients from social networks. That's an innovation in terms of use. 
but technological innovation linked to GTLD extensions in my mind and to my knowledge, you have Frogans and no one else. So that carries a very significant innovation that is not even linked to the semantics of the extension. Most of the hopes founded on registering GTLDs are founded on an analysis of the value of the semantics of that extension. Like, I have the dot web. OK, I'll make millions of re registrations. That's not how programs works. It could be dot something else. It wouldn't change anything. What changes is that it makes it possible. It makes it easier to deploy Forgan's technology. In that respect, it is extremely innovative already. Thank you so much, Pierre. I urge you to make the most of having Pierre with us. As you can see, he is an expert in Internet governance and all these issues to raise questions out of the box with respect to Forgan's. So don't hesitate. If not, you may have a conversation between Pierre and myself on Internet governance, and that's going to take hours to begin with. And you may feel a little bit excluded. So I urge you to ask your questions. I can see one over there. So let me bring the mic. My question is for AFNIC. And I'd like to know what's the burden? You seem to say it's a very expensive and takes a lot of time. The burden of taking part in these discussions. What type of investment does that mean for AFNIC today? Let me give you, well, for ICANN, minimum five to six employees go there. The next will be in Los Angeles, lasts for one week normally, and that's every four months. Now, and that's not only internet governance only. You have relations between clients and service providers because we are clients for ICANN functions. But let's say we have three. Well, we have three out of five employees who are really dealing with governance. You add to that topics linked to UTF, and in which we monitor. We always have one or two employees attending all U2F meetings. You add to that the systematic presence at um, IGF, for example. Well, as far as possible, anyway. So you have the equivalent. Well, plus organizing meetings, reports. I think in a year, that means about one and a half full-time equivalent at AFNIC, minimum. That's a minimum. And the other assignments, but that's our assignment. That's our term of reference. And that's our purpose, but that's not the same for everyone. Thank you, Pierre. There's another question at the back of the auditorium. My question is the following. At the European level, each European country sends its representative, or is there a consultation when it comes to dealing with governance? Apparently, there are three blocks, the United States, China, and Asia, and maybe Europe. Well, you have European consultation, but they all send their own players, all send their own guys. There's no real European stance today, but there is a shared will, more and more, I believe. We can say that over the past two or three years, there's been a European stance, aside from following others, not being very well informed, not being with the bad guys, so they went towards the Americans because the others were the Chinese. But that stance is not very elaborate, but it's coming. But you won't necessarily. Well, I mean, European consultation is important. But national consultation may be even more important. In other words, we may have everything to gain from being 
from having better consultation amongst the French before going to ICANN. At ICANN, you have people from civil society, from governments, from the private sector. We don't do that to begin with. We do it a bit, but not sufficiently. So European consultation for the time being is just governmental. It's not multi-stakeholder. You can say that there is a real European consultation. Thank you, Pierre. I think David had a question. And then probably it will be the last on this point to try to stick to our schedule. Yes, David Taillère. Now, the reaction of the American state, I slammed the doors and you just deal with it. Wasn't it time to bring back governments in internet governance and that could have a, a negative impact on what internet really is? I think there are a lot of historians who will be trying to examine why Strictly came up with that press release in March. The important thing is that it's probably, I don't think that is really made for governments because they right stated clearly that if we stop taking care of it, it's out of the question for any government to take care of that. In a nutshell, you may add to what I have to say, but there's two theses. The thesis, well, that they've always said it. When ICANN was founded, they said that one ICANN becomes mature and flies with its own wings and the community is organized, the government will privatize the Diana function. In other words, they will stop taking charge of it. That's the most consistent and logical version. And there's another version, which Snowden and the anger of all the governments, representatives of civil society and so on. The US government showing the example and saying that we defend liberties. We have wonderful models, and you can trust us. All of a sudden, they were impacted, and they're trying to do this to look better. I don't know which version is the real one. I think that things will be clarified in September 2015. If supervision has been changed, we may say it may be the first version, or if nothing happened at all, we would then say it was the second version. Thank you, Pierre. Sebastian. I really, you have a question, but I'd really like us to be on time. But I can't say no to you. Thank you. Sebastian Bachelet, ICANN board member for yet a few weeks. A French member on the ICANN board. Pierre, I agree. There's a third interpretation. I'm not saying that they're not as good as, they're not all good. But the third interpretation is that the community must also show that it is ready. The government must show that they're ready before the governments all meet. There must be alternative solutions for some governments instead of saying that the only solution is the UIT. If you put all three together, that gives you a certain vision of reality, which is interesting. To come back to what you said at the outset, I would like to say that the reason why Pierre is here, first of all, is an expert, but also because in his functions as uh, deputy CEO of ATNIC, he helps the local people, us here, for us to talk together, do things together. The simplest way to do so is to become a member of AFNIC, and I can only urge all of you individually or through your organization to become members of AFNIC and to take part in its consultation committees. Thank you. Thank you, Sebastian. Thank you so much. Thank you, Sebastian and Pierre, for a very clear presentation of changes in internet governance. Yes, we're two real experts, Sebastian as well.
So I, a uh, director at ICANN and AFNIC. So of course we will invite them again because we did not have enough time to really probe into all the complexities. But that anyway, what we'll take away from this is innovation in Frogans. It is probably the only different use of a first level generic extension, because that's what GTLD means today in the program. I know that we're all very proud of that. At OP3 FT showing once again this desire and the wish to serve users lying at the heart of our activities to develop this new technology. So I believe that it is important and thank you once again, Pierre Bonis and Sebastien Bachelet.